So good evening. Welcome once again to Professor Academy's question paper analysis of UGC NET English, December 2021, Shift 1. And today we are going to analyze questions from 66 to 70. And let's go to question number 66. Which of the following are poems by Nizam Ezekiel that make fun of Indians' use of English? Then we have five poems, capital A, Goodbye Party for Miss Pushpa T.S. B. Philosophy. C. Very Indian poem in Indian English. D. Jewish Wedding in Bombay. E. Poet, Lover, Bird Watcher. So we have five, five poems and these are the options. So we have to you know, find out the poems which mocks or which makes fun of Indians' use of English. So option A. A and C only, B, A, B and D only, C, A, C and E only, D, B and D only. So before you go for the answer, try to eliminate. So number one, one of the options is very easy and straightforward. Op I mean, uh, the poems. C, very Indian poem in Indian English. The poem itself declares that it's written in Indian English or it mocks the use of uh, now, the Indians use of English. So C should be there in the options. So if you look for C, only two options uh, have C. So you can eliminate option B and option D. So we are left with option A and C. And option A, A and C. Option C, A, C and E. So only one we have to decide. Whether E, I mean poet, lover, bird watcher, does this poem make fun of Indians' use of language. And if it does, then answer is C. And if it doesn't, then answer is A and C only. So answer A and C only. In the sense, goodbye party for Miss Pushpa T.S. and very Indian poem in Indian English. These are the two poems that make fun of Indians' use of English. And E, why it's not? Because this poem compares these three. Poet, a lover, bird watcher. And what is the similarity between these three, you know, patients, their patients and the reward they get. A poet is rewarded for his or her, uh, you know, uh, patience. And finally, what's the reward? The poem itself. The poem comes up with a poem. Lover is rewarded for his or her patience. And finally, the lover wins the love of the lady love or the lover. And finally, bird watcher is rewarded uh, for his or her patience. Finally, the bird watcher, you know, cites the rare bird, which rarely comes out of the bush, right? So that's a different poem. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, making fun of Indians' use of English. But let's see the two poems. So when we think of Nizam Isikal, this is one of his often prescribed poems, right? Uh, Good boy party for Miss Push Party is yes, where uh, someone uh, a colleague is giving a speech uh, on Miss Pushpa T.S., you know, leaving that office and going abroad. And here is a part from that poem. So this, the speaker says, whenever I asked her to do anything. So what is grammatically wrong in this, uh, in a first line? Uh, I mean, in his speech, whenever I asked her to do, we supposed to say something. Whenever I asked her to do something, you know, in English, in generally, in English, we, something is associated with positive. Anything, we use the word anything uh, with negative. She doesn't do anything. She does everything or uh, I asked her to do something. So anything, generally this word goes with a negative sentence, not a positive one. But here it is used in a positive sense, but it's supposed to go with negative. Whenever I asked her to do something, you know, that should be the correct one. But in Indian English, we mix up, whether it's something or anything, we mix up both. Next one, uh, Indians, we have this problem of, you know, uh, we should go for simple past or simple present, but we always go for, you know, pr in a continuous tense. For instance, she said, instead of saying, she said, she was saying, and instead of saying, I always appreciate, you know, we're supposed to use simple present tense, uh, but here the speaker is, I am always appreciating the good spread. You can't, I'm always appreciating. I always appreciate. 
so this is you know mocking at indian english uh, and again you know mixing a past you know uh, tense uh, she was saying just now only i will do it you know instead of you know referring to the present it refers to the future and that is showing good spirit that shows good uh, good spirit again instead of uh, going for a simple tense you go for a continuous tense so this poem is clearly a poem that mocks uh, indians use of english then we have this poem uh, very indian poem in indian english also kind of uh, the patriot so look at the lines here other day i am reading in uh, newspaper other day past tense so suppose to go for other day the other day i was reading i was reading newspaper not in uh, newspaper every day i am reading times of india every day i read right so instead of going for again the same problem instead of going for simple present we go for continuous so every day i am reading times of india to improve my english language that is redundancy we say improve my english or the english language or my english language that's uh, odd phrase then how one gunda fellow throw stone at indira behem uh, ben must be student understood fellow i thinking i am thinking friends romans countrymen i am saying to myself lend me the ears so it mocks at the indians way of you know imitating or try to follow that but uh, they fail in english we don't say i am thinking i think you know think we are we hardly use it in continuous tense and this is the uh, mockery of uh, the speaker is making uh, you know you know kind of uh, made a mockery of himself by imitating antony's speech uh, in julius caesar friends romans countrymen not necessarily uh, there he says lend me your ears not lend me the ears as if the speaker is asking uh, someone to cut off someone's ear and present those ears to me right so this again is a poem typical poem that uh, mocks in the english then what you can do next you can read some of his other poems so you can read his uh, uh, masterpiece night of the scorpion or poet lover bird watcher background casually in this poem he talks about his uh, jewish uh, background and and the discrimination he faced then you have morning walk then philosophy then we have jewish wedding in bombay minority poem enterprise so you can read you know these poems these are often prescribed often talked about poems and these are some of his famous poetry collections so nizam musical is known for the unfinished man 1960 poetry collection the exact name 1965 hymns in darkness 1976 and uh, later day psalms 1982 which won the sangeeta academy award uh, for him all right then let's go to question number 67 which of these poets wrote a poem that served to inspire dawli b aids to write his own poem when you are old this is a tough question because uh, this poem is not so famous when we read um, uh, read aids poems irish poet aids poems and on top of it they ask okay you know from where he got this inspiration so options a the french poet Francois Villon V A L L O N uh, B the Elizabethan poet Edmund Spencer C the German poet uh, Heinrich Heine H E I N R I C H Heine H E I N E then again a uh, French poet D Pierre de Ronsa R O N S C A R D so we get these kinds of questions which is tough sometimes you have to go with instinct and you know it's it's a tough question you know we don't know once even if we have read this poem it's tough whether uh, we are aware of its background okay so what we get from this question is that whenever we read a poem we have to make sure whether this poem is inspired or based on some other poem answer a d pierre de ronsa you know french poet and pierre de ronsa a 16th century renaissance poet french poet and uh, one of his famous collections we have Le second livre de sonnet pour Helen 1578 uh, translation the second book of sonnets for Helen so it's a kind of love sonnets so here is a sonnet and based on this sonnet aids wrote that poem and we have four lines from this sonnet so look at that when you are old 
sitting by the fire, stitching and unstitching by the evening candle, you will sing my words and marvel. Ronsong made poems of me when I was beautiful. So it's a kind of, it seems like Ronsa, uh, uh, you know, fell in love with Helen, but uh, a kind of an unrequited love. Helen might have married someone else, but Ronsa writes this sonnet saying, okay, when you get old, definitely you will think of me. You know, I'm old now, but my, my, you know, my lover once, he captured my beauty in his poems and I'm always beautiful in his poems. So that kind of a tribute to the lover by uh, Ronsa, right? And this inspired AIDS because we know this story. AIDS fell in love with Maud Gon, but she married someone else, even gave birth to children and one of her uh, children died and she was sad and they met again uh, Maud Gon and WB AIDS. At that time, you know, he wrote this uh, poem, When You Are Old. So this is based on Ronsa's sonnet. And this poem was published in 1892 in the collection. The Countess Kathleen, uh, which is a play by W.B. Yeats, and various legends and lyrics. So in this collection, 1892. So let's read a few lines from this work. When you are old and gray, full of sleep, and nodding by the fire, take down this book. So this book refers to the collection. WB AIDS, the Countess Kathleen and various legends and lyrics. And slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once and of their shadows deep. Almost same. The earlier poem by the French poet and the Irish poet, almost the same. So that's why this question is asked. So what you can do next? We can check out some of the famous works by AIDS because we always get a question from modernist poets from AIDS or T.S. Eliot or Ezra Pound. So let's check out, perhaps, why don't you check out the contents of this collection, 1892 collection, The Countess Kathleen and Various Legends and Lyrics. So these are some of the well-known poems from this collection. To the rose upon the root of time. Then the ballad of the old fox hunter. And the next one is very famous. Uh, the Lake Isle of Innisfree, then The Pity of Love, then another poem, When You Are Sad. So when you are old, so this poem, When You Are Sad, then Who Goes with Fergus, F-U-R-G-U-S. So apart from this collection, we can also read some of his uh, 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 celebrated works like Byzantium, Sailing to Byzantium, A Prayer for My Daughter, Among School Children, Easter 1916, the second coming under Ben Bulben. So this book, the last one, under Ben Bulben, you know, some of the lines from this poem are taken and are and were inscribed on the tombstone of WB AIDS when he died. So what you see on the screen is the tombstone of uh, WB AIDS, and the lines are inscribed on the tombstone are taken from uh, under Ben Bulben. Even this could be a question next time. So these are the lines. Cast a cold eye on life, on death, horseman pass by. Okay. So with this, we'll go to the next question. Before that, we have to read. The following questions are based on this poem by uh, Hopkins. So we have to pay some attention uh, to this poem. Uh, let's read. It's a sonnet in the form of, a pet, you know, uh, following the Petrocan tradition. So we have octet and Octave and sister. So eight lines, six lines, sonnet. So let's read first octave. No worst, there is none. So that's the title of the poem. So no worst, there is none. So no worst in the sense you're in a situation which is uh, you know, worse than the previous one, the previous situation. So this is no better. This is worse compared to the earlier situations you were in. This is the worst situation, all right? So, so much pain in this situation. No worst, there is none. So, uh, not comparable, right? You can't compare this with anything else. This is the worst one. Okay, fine. Then, pitched past pitch of grief. In the sense, the pain caused because of this situation, you know, it's much bad, you no know, much uh, worse. Why? 
pitched past pitch of grief pitch of grief refers to the summit uh, almost you reached the summit of grief after that you can't uh, feel no more right you are so sad beyond that you can't feel any more thing so pitch of grief you reached the summit or the peak of grief and after that there is nothing so you reach the top one more pangs will but what happens even after that you know a kind of waves of pangs you know sorrows come and attack you schooled at four pangs and those sorrows they were aware of the earlier sorrows experienced by you schooled at four pangs four pangs before the earlier ones the earlier sorrows and now what happens wilder ring you know now they trouble you they crush you to the core comforter where where is your comforting so the speaker asked see i am in a situation uh, which can't be compared with any other situation was thing that has happened to me now where are you god so comforter here refers to jesus christ where is your comforting you know i i am your devotee so why don't you comfort me so it's a kind of a spiritual question why are you testing me always why don't you stand by me next question mary mother of us where is your relief leave your son how about you mother why don't you protect me next my cries he hurts long then he says because of my pain i cry and my cry it's like it's like an animal cry a cry of an animal not just a single animal but a herd a entire herd uh, of animals uh, maybe uh, you know, dumb animals uh, they are crying out of pain and that is my cry don't you hear that huddle in a main a chief o world sorrow so what is the cause of my pain and that is a vague you know vague one world sorrow maybe what we experience in our everyday life world sorrow or meaning of life so something that happens to us again and again a kind of a, a broad one world sorrow and next is a kind of an image or a kind of a metaphor you know explaining the pain on an age old anvil winds and sing so it refers to a blacksmith you know the instrument used by a blacksmith in his workshop anvil so on the top of the anvil you place a piece of iron and you strike it again and again with a hammer right so that's what we do uh, i mean blacksmiths do in the workshop and that is compared with this you know wa waves of pain attacking this person so imagine a blacksmith striking a piece of metal on the anvil placed on the anvil with uh, his hammer again and again so similar way the the speaker is beaten again and again right by maybe perhaps life a personified life again and again and what happens then lull suddenly there is a stop maybe the blacksmith is tired maybe pain itself is tired of torturing this fellow and there is a kind of a break then leave off again it starts because there is no end to it then suddenly the anger in you uh, in here uh, fury is personified it in a fury had shrieked you know without tolerating this pain it it, it shrieked no lingering let me be fell please kill me off you know why are you torturing me you know by taking a break again coming back and again beating me just finish me off once and for all force i must be brief so that should be brief a be a, a short and brief but instead of that this pain prolongs and on and on it goes on and on so this is uh, very torturous and this is octave next we go to the next six lines says that oh the mind mind has mountains so in the sense sometimes uh, you know we make pain out of an ordinary situation M mind has mountains you know you know sometimes we are in a bad situation we can face that situation but our mind makes a mountain of top that mole hill right it is all in the mind if we think we can manage then we can or else then mind creates trouble sometimes because of our mind a fragile one uh it makes us stand on a cliff right so we are standing on the edge of a cliff because of our mind 
so it is the mind that creates this torture not actually the real world cliffs of fall frightful sheer no man fathomed and what happens since your uh, since the speaker is standing on the cliff what you see you know below is an abyss we we don't know where we might end up uh, you know after falling down so it is sheer you know sheer i mean since we can't see the depth i mean the bottom it goes on and on so you are standing on the cliff you are afraid of facing the you know the pain but there are people who hold them cheap may who never hung there but there are people uh, who mocks us a hey, that's a, a simple situation can't you handle that but they don't know you know when they make you no know, when they make this uh, kind of a, a statement these kinds of statements they are aware of our situation maybe they were not in this situation or uh, a situation like this so they demean this kind of a situation hold them cheap may who never hung there people who were not or who have been uh, not there on the cliff of uh, sorrow may not understand this nor does long our small durance deal with that steep or deep and one more thing this can go on and on the pain can go on and on but this life is short our small durance deal with that steep you know that uh, 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 edge or the bottom deep here so what we can do we can creep like an animal rich under a comfort maybe go to sleep but comfort serves in a whirlwind but imagine you can't sleep comfortably uh, why because there is a whirlwind we are the troubles are like a whirlwind that tortures you you can't sleep comfortably all after all what happens life death does end but you know one thing can put an end to all these sufferings death life death does end and each day dies with sleep it's like a, you know we go through a lot of things in a single day but at the end of the day we go to sleep and it starts again okay so this is gerald uh, manley hopkins poem so based on this uh, this poem this sonnet we have three questions so earlier we also discussed in net exams these days we get questions from sonnets i mean poems you know novels uh, especially endings or beginning or a particular situation in a particular novel or particular essay or even a drama so you have to get ready uh, you have to equip yourself uh, to face questions like this right so interpretation so these days you are the aspirants of net exam they are expected to interpret text on the spot let's see question 68 which of the following best describes the meaning of the title of the poem no worst here is none pay attention and let's go to the option option a it is not worst because there is nothing do you think it is not worst no worst here is none we know the meaning right so consider this option next one it is very bad as no one is there you know as if someone is not there so we feel the situation is bad c no it is worst as nothing is there so this time there is nothing there so we feel it is bad then nothing can be so much bad as this all right so if you pay attention uh, or if you read this poem again and again this you can actually crack nothing can be so much bad as this right so this is the answer answer d option d nothing can be so much bad as this so this is because whenever we you know go through uh, a bad situation you know we forget the the past ones according to that situation that is the bad situation okay so so that's the line and that's the meaning of uh, the title no worst here is none nothing can be so much bad as this situation next question 69 which two of the following are true so we have four statements capital a not all know the intensity and depth of suffering so not all people um, can understand the situation so not all know the intensity and depth of suffering right because not all are uh, uh, you know suffering some are privileged 
B. Death does not put an end to our sufferings. Do you think so? C. Suffering is seen as winds that hinder comfort. D. Suffering's intensity or depth is in the mind. It's up to you. Because of, the mind makes you think so. Right? So what we can do, first, let's eliminate options before we go to the options. So what is the first uh, statement that you want to eliminate? Death does not put an end to our sufferings. So in the poem, there's a perfect line that says, life, death does end. So death put an end to life and also the suffering. So you can eliminate B. So you can, if you can eliminate B, then we can eliminate, I mean, that statement, we can eliminate two options. Option B, which says A and B only. Then option C, B and D only. So let's eliminate these two options. You are left with two other options. Option A, A and D only. D, C and D only. So, okay. And what's the commonality? D, I mean, the last statement. Suffering's intensity or depth is in the mind. That's also there, right? Um, it's a mind that makes, our mind has mountains. So now we have to decide. It is A or C. If you say A, then A and D is the answer. Or C, C and D is the answer. So what is A? Not all know the intensity and depth of suffering. That is there, yes. Then suffering is seen as winds that hinder comfort. Uh, there is a kind of mention of whirlwind. But we are not sure is it suffering is seen as winds that hinder comfort. So you have to make a choice. Then the answer is A. A and D only. Not all know the intensity or truth of, uh, sorry, depth uh, of suffering. Then D, suffering's intensity or depth is in the mind. And C, it's almost near. Uh, I mean, uh, it is that it is very confusing because there is a mention of whirlwind, but we are not sure it is a whirlwind of suffering. It's just a metaphor there. It's up to us to interpret. So if you want to eliminate, maybe we can see eliminate. So it's a bit tough whether it is A or uh, D option. But the answer given is A and D. I mean, option A. Not all know the intensity and depth of suffering. And uh, suffering's intensity or depth is in the mind. We'll go to the last question of today's class based on the poem. Beyond the intensity of known grief, there can be. So first, let's understand the question. What is the question? You know, the pitch of suffering. I mean, the pitch of grief. You know, you... You know the end or peak of suffering, right? The known grief, what you have gone through, right? Beyond that, that can be anything. Option A, beyond the known suffering, there can be no grief than being experienced. Do you think there is no grief other than what we experience? B, only a new pain more painful, right? C, only the twisted known pains. D, the griefs beyond limits of pain. So there are griefs that go beyond the limits of pain. And C is also a bit uh, a, a tricky one. Only the twisted known pains. Sometimes we go through something and our mind tricks that and twists it and makes it more painful. Is that one? So you have four options. Let's go for the answer. Answer is C. Beyond the intensity of known grief, only the twisted, there can be only the twisted known pains. Sometimes we go through pain, our mind twists that known pain and make it more painful. So that is the answer given here. So with this, let's end today's class. So again, the lesson we learned from this uh, analysis is that we have to you know, pay more attention to interpretation. And what we can do next, you can read some of the well-known poems of Hopkins, Piet Beauty, God's grandeur, the wind over, the wreck of the Dushit clan, Felix Randall, carrying comfort. These are the often prescribed poems or often uh, read poems. You can pay attention to these poems. And these are the, some of the terms introduced by Hopkins. Inscape, in stress, sprung rhythm, which is well known, then running rhythm and rocking rhythm. These are the uh, terms introduced and also a technical speciality. It, it refers to uh, his innovation. Uh, and there's also something called a Kirtel sonnet, C U R T A L, Kirtel sonnet, tenant of line sonnet, invented by G M Hopkins. So you can check out Inscape, Instress, Sprung Rhythm, Running Rhythm, Rocking Rhythm, and also Kirtel sonnet. 
So with this, let's end today's class. Thank you so much. Uh, see you tomorrow with uh, analysis of another five questions. You can subscribe to this channel for further updates and also contact this number if you want to join uh, the course. Thank you.